You already know what it is. It was all a dream podcast. Back at y'all again with another one. They call me Dutchy, man. Bars. DJ Blackout. Oskino Vasquez. What up, what up? Poor Siege. Let's go. All right. This episode here is a very, very, very special one for me because um, we have hip hop royalty in the building. Um, so, first and foremost, I want to thank a lot that you're still here. Sure. Because a lot of people, you know, mm. ain't here no more. Sure. Man. You know what I'm saying? That that was something that I was compelled, man, to, to tell you because as a father, I I don't know how I would manage. You know what I'm right. saying? Like like with, with, with that type of obstacle being put in front of me, but we know the cut of a law and that's what we live by, but it's still our children. Yeah. Right. So I was at the I was at the very side today. Just going down there, I mean it's it's, it's, it's it's the hardest thing ever. Out of anything in your life, it's the hardest thing ever. It's nothing harder than that. Nothing harder than that. you start not you start I'm recognizing yourself because you, your brain start playing tricks on you, you start feeling crazy like you mean. So you got I mean you start how to push yourself, especially when it's your son that you know, you got sons by some people that you mean you I mean I see him all the time. No, this is my son that was you mean with me from some stuff. I wanted him since before he was born, you know I mean, waiting for right. him to be born, you know I mean. So like that, you know I mean called me two hours before it happened, you know I mean, so like that shit like fuck me up bad. Like I mean I almost I almost ain't like making it through that shit, man. I don't know why you made it, bro. Oh, nah. I heard you say he was used to be with you like on that on that day to day basis yeah, every, every day. Every day. Since he was right like, around with you. Yeah, like, dog, every picture he would be in LA, we knew, you know I mean his mom do hair. Okay. So she's like, yeah, we at work, so he was with me, we out. I mean, he was two years old, he be LA and all that, you know what I mean? So, like, so that was my young boy, the same name and everything, you know what I mean? So like, then he had, then he had a two-month old daughter in his class. That's crazy. And then, like, so how does that change your perspective when you think about all the stuff that you've been through? That's the reason, that's the reason why I made, I made it with being, like, I, I, I was cool with it, because it made it, it don't seem simple, like, like, it wasn't it ain't worth it. It, it made it like it ain't, it ain't nothing, you know what I mean? So, that's, that's what it did. It, it made, mm -hmm. it, that, that to me, it made me not scared to die. I mean, like, if you feel real guilty, your son died, you, you still love him, man. That's, that's the thing, like, I mean, it's just... It's just yeah. So let's go back to the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. What was one of the first years that you ever really started to say, well, this is something that I want to do far as with music? I always wanted to do it, right? But when I got shot in 97, you know what I mean? Because I, I was in the Army, I went to the Army. From straight out of high school, I went to the Army. And, when I, I got, and I did basic training, and I came home and got shot up, and I couldn't go back. You know what I mean? And I said, damn, what the fuck am I going to do? You know what I mean? And I got shot up bad, you know what I mean? So I said, damn, I got to do something. And I, and I just start going to the studio, man, because I already was writing red, but on the low. You know what I mean? Right. And I just took that shit all the way serious. You know what I mean, talking about, like, I said, this got to work. You know what I mean? This shit got to work. You know what I mean? So I take that shit real time. No going on dates, none of that shit. I'm talking about straight studio. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, Get songs and shit, man, shit. So who was your influences? Like when you thought about that first time you wanted to go in there and make a song? I didn't really have too many influences then, cause like back then it was about having your own style. Okay. So you can't really rap like nobody. But Biggie, my favorite rapper, ever, all time. I mean, that's just that's Same. Jada Kiss. Same. That, 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 that bad boy shit that was going on. That was that was what it was. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. So 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 like, I mean, but but at the same time we had, we rap different a little bit, cause it was more like gangster shit than clothes shit. Like like flash. I mean like I mean. Major, major figures had the close shit and the, the flash shit down pad. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they had that shit on, that's, that's, they had that shit on smash shit. So you, you started with a group, ICH. Yeah, ICH, yeah. ICH, uh, uh, Inner uh, in a city hustlers, yep. right? Yep. Um, I remember that time very, very well because it was like, you know, we didn't have social media. No, at all. So, so the word of mouth shit was right, like. Right. That's, that's it, more it, powerful though. Yeah, it was like, no, but you know who them niggas was yeah. that, you know what I mean? That was really making an impact because your name was brought up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and those who could rap type of conversations. Mm -hmm. So I remember those days at ICH and, and, and y'all being from a whole nother part of the city mm -hmm. and niggas is talking. I, I think the Black House was like yeah, places yeah, where, yeah. where a lot of artists that was and, like- In front of Studio 37. Yeah, yeah, Studio 37, yeah. shit, man. Those, those was the fucking days. I remember, I remember I thought I was all cocky and shit, but most things I was just destroyed, right? Then you run into me, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> like, I went into the nigga journalist one time. Like, oh, <laughs> I said, I got it. Shut your guys in battle every weekend, Shelliano. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's my blood cousin. That's what got me. That's what got me. Listen, I used to always ask him stress. This is where I spot like on Lancaster Avenue, right? And he got his homies like, oh, I'm like, you know, that nigga like a DM Wild yeah. and DM Mixed. Yeah. Especially, yeah. imagine he's young though. Yeah. So. I got a better nigga every weekend like that. That nigga had like, and he never ran out of bars. And he freestyle sh like he wrote it. He freestyle like he like he like, like you think he wrote it. Just he, he had the rate of the nigga. Yeah, he played. Nigga, so I got a better nigga like I'm like 19, 20. 
And my homie was like, oh, you better, you better let him get you. So that's how like, I'll start getting good about like put, putting yourself out there for failure. I was, I was stressed out because I was about to battle this nigga in front of people. Everything. So that's the same group, Emilio uh, Sparks yeah, 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 yeah. or Shelliano is that? Shout out Shelliano, man. He, he underrated. There's some yeah. niggas that was some problems. That's still some problems. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. He definitely yeah. was. That nigga did some shit recently. Yeah, he did it a couple of times. So you're back. So then he's all aggressive. You mean you think all of your things and shit? Nah. I saw that bad nigga. So in the time, right from ICH, right? So when did ICH start? When did it start? It started before I was in it. I was. It was already a known group before I was in it. So who was in that group? Emilio was. So Emilio wasn't in it before me. It was like like the older people that before me. It was like. The time 100 X in them, they came out around that time. Okay. So they, 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 they basically recruited me, like, yo, young, you hot, like, yeah, I mean, we got a studio, I got a real job, I can just stay in there, then they, they just get money. So I just stayed in there, you know what I mean? So I just took advantage of that shit, like, and everybody was leave. Then I found some young boy in the Colossus, he knew how to work the computer shit, kidnapped him. And we, I just had like 300 songs, you know what I mean? So it's crazy. You know what I mean? But it's good because by the time I got a chance to try to get signed, I was ready. I mean, I was ready. Like, so, I mean, so where Emilio coming at? Him? Well, he, well, he was he was hustling right from my the same boy uh, that had the studio. You know I mean, so oh, nice. they like he rapped, so he started coming in and rapping like this nigga sound crazy. I mean, so we started doing songs together like by just by just you know you know homie and the John kicking right. and just and next thing you know we got a whole bunch of shit together. You know I mean, it's like yo. I mean, they, so, so was like it ever a time that y'all thought like we should make ourselves a duo or? But, no, it was like it just happened by like by just by default. Okay. You know what I mean, because everybody when you think about state property and. and and y'all crew is like, they always put Emilio and Sparks like y'all was a group at the beginning. But it's the same though. Good. When you look at State Property One's album, mostly all the songs on there was songs me and Sparks had before we even knew them, before we even knew mm -hmm. anybody in there. They just took, put people versus on shit, like, Tons of Hustler, all that shit, like, like that's all that shit. We had that, that was our song. That's all shit right there, Tons of Hustler. Yeah, we had bad Yeah, we gonna get into that. <clears throat> so tapping back into the middle, right? Mm. And, and, and right, cause now you in the middle basically, like now you doing it you yeah. went from the beginning where you said i always wanted to do it then you now you went to the mode of yeah. all right we're doing you got 300 songs yeah. from that time to getting the initial deal that we all want you know what i'm saying we that's what we but, wanted was to get signed the, 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 i moved to new york before i got i was trying to move to new york living in yonkers i was like, living out there for like nine months bro i lived in yonkers for yeah, me and bump lived out yeah, there for two years bro. I was out there, I was in schoolhouse project yeah i was in 98 to 99 i was out there I mean, <laughs> go to the restaurant the studio every day in Getty Square. Every day. But I thought you met Hov when I'm here in Philly, though, right? At the, at no, no, I actually Hov. I met Hov in New York, but the boys who took me to Hov, I met in Philly. All right. Yeah. But, but, now, listen, I'm getting, that's what I'm getting that's to. That's why right? I'm rising yeah. to that. So, yeah. listen, I'm getting to that, right? So, okay, now you go from, damn, from Yonkers. So, who are some of the artists that you worked with in the beginning, right there, in that point? That but nobody, nobody, no, 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 just nobody. No, no, back then, it was like, it was the, uh, what, the niggas I was living with, it was me, some nigga named Another Speed. And, and Gold Bra, they had they had like a deal with uh, Mary J. Lodge. Oh, all right, all right. But so I'm living in the house with these niggas. They they basically on, and I'm not. I mean, then they shoot a movie called Prison Stories with Mary J. Lodge, and, and I, I mean, I'm like, so my we the drawing. I said, damn, I gotta get this. It motivated me. I mean, I'm like, right, damn, right. these niggas doing it. I ain't, I mean, so I just go to the kid's house, knock on the door, rap for him every day. Go to Rough Rock I was just doing whatever. I mean, it's, and that one was working, right? So the kissing them was like, yo, we coming to Philly, we going to Philly for the Greek. So I come to Philly with them, and while I'm in the Philly with the, kissing them, some niggas was battling me in the, in the lobby of a hotel. And some, some niggas walk up like, what the fuck is you? And I said, I ain't nobody yet. Right. <laughs> they said, we know JC, man, we'll take you up there tomorrow. He's looking for some people. We, we think you can get on. I was like, man, get the fuck out. I like, man, this shit don't like that don't happen to me, man. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't know if it was cabin. Yeah, I said, man, whatever, man. I mean, so I didn't even take it serious. He said, no, we're going to call you tomorrow. I said, man, whatever. Yeah, man. That shit, the next day they called me, took me up there. It's crazy. One, one day, that shit was like, dog, me being there. It's first one even on. They wasn't just first. I put first the PDF on them to stay private. They, but they, it wasn't there. So I, when they came, so I took my whole squad up there to the, to the joint with BJ Z. Like, I mean, it wasn't just, I didn't bring just me. I just I took everybody, I took like 10 niggas up there. He said, if you don't like me, maybe you like one of y'all niggas. You know what I mean? But, but when Jay Z walked in the room, he's like, I got five minutes. I was in this nigga face like this close. Like, I'm saying, nigga, this is my. You know, I was right, I was right for my life, nigga. I, just, <laughs> I, 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 I had pictured that moment in my head a million times. I right, mean, so like, I mean, that shit. You remember like, what you spent? So the whole bus, I spent two hours. Right, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. No, that's how it was, though. Let me get things start changing. He said, he only had five minutes. I got five minutes, man. Well, when you run up on hold, yeah, like, hold, well, he want to hear that shit. That nigga said, let me talk to you in the bathroom. I said, yo, I'm trying to sign you right now. I'm like, nigga, this. I said, right. I said, I said, yo, can you give me a hotel room? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, for what? I said, I don't want you. You tell me you're going to sign me. I said, I'm going to make this for the end of the kill. He shit. got me a room. I said, they up there. I mean, and that, that was it. So what's the, what's the timeline from that moment right there? From the time you got, you said you came home and got shot up. From that time. I got shot up in 96, June 26, 1997. And then. I saw August 21st, 1999. So you're talking about two years. You grinded it out. 
Yeah, and I, and I was shot a band until my like camp. Well, that was in prison for a little bit after I got shot. So like really like a year and some change, like just straight like just going hard. Every day though. Like I'm talking every let's say every day. And if I'm not in the studio, I had to look at a little book I said in my pocket, write everything, I used to write every everything, I mean. Cause I knew my vocabulary wasn't there, so I used to be just trying to just fuck with fuck with shit. Just working on Cause it ain't come easy for me. Some people that shit come easy for. For me it ain't come easy. Like I had to really work for, for that shit. I mean like so And it's key you say that because the way you rap to me as a as a fan listening sonically, it seemed like it's something that because I worked hard on it. That's, so that, like, that's a testament to me. It's like like a nigga like Meek Mills, this shit come easy to him. And that's like this nigga as, as a kid, like, y'all like that nigga shit come easy to him. And not only that, when you write the shit, he remember it. Yeah, he write that shit and remember this shit on the from the. I thought man Gilly was like the best at that, like remembering that shit. That nigga was like remember that shit like like he just but he been had it for years and didn't say it like he had it for years. I'm like this nigga. Then he rap loud as shit like you don't need a microphone. I was like, this nigga amazed to be a rapper, man. Speaking of remembering the shit, I heard you say Hove. You spit a you spit a verse to Hove and he remembered the whole joint. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I can do now. But like at the time, like yo, how the fuck? He, 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 cause you, what, it, what this thing was, every time you see him, you gotta say a rap, new rap to him. Bro. You don't got a new rap guy. But nigga, you ain't got a new rap guy. But yeah, no, he was really jacking shit. shit. That's what he's jacking shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. One thing, one thing y'all know about O oh, in his interviews, he's yeah. gonna say exactly. what he's gonna say. Exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 If I say something, like I had a song called Girls, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So say, say if I say something, but Jay Z come out with a song, I'll beat off him now. Yeah. 